Hashmap Megabytes. Hello and welcome to another episode of Hashmap Megabytes. My name is David Hernser. And today I'm going to try to quickly go through, and I do mean quickly, I'm going to talk very fast. You may have to slow down the video to 0.75, but um, that's all right. I'm going to try to quickly guide you through creating a data pipeline to get Facebook Insights data out of the Facebook Insights API and into a data warehouse. Let's get started. What's the mission? The mission is truly to ingest data from Facebook Insights API into Snowflake. So we want to really try to keep this as cloud-based as possible. And being the fact that it's cloud-based, we want to utilize SaaS as much as we can. And we want to try to make this truly where it's low to no code, except for the SQL, of course, in the visualizations. Let's go, right through, let's go through our tech stack. What we have, we have Fivetran, Snowflake, Looker, and GitLab. Fivetran. Why are we choosing Fivetran? Number one, Fivetran, you can go to Fivetran.com, get some good overview of the product. Fivetran is a great utility, and it is very simple to use. And we're going to go over some of the interface here shortly. But they have a very awesome, uh, already pre-built Facebook Insights connector. And we're going to use them as our data integration and orchestration tool. Snowflake, don't even need to mention them. Snowflake is the most awesome cloud-based data warehouse there is out there. Virtually unlimited scale of compute as well as separated compute and storage. But I don't want to scare you. We're not actually going to be pulling that much data out of the Facebook Insights. We just, I just want to, I'm very comfortable with Snowflake and I want to use it since I'm, I'm already at the comfort level with it. And the best thing is Fivetrend already has a destination connector for Snowflake. So Looker and GitLab, how do they come in the picture? Pulling data is fun, right? It, it, that's, that, that's the whole point of this uh, POC. And we, I think we're going to pull around 42 uh, some odd tables out of the Facebook Insights API into Snowflake. But where's the fun in just having data? We want to be able to visualize it and create some dashboards and maybe or create a dav dashboard and kind of show you the power of what we can do once we get this data in hand. How GitLab comes into that? Well, of course, if we're using Looker, Looker is kind of a, a dev, DevOps process. So we want to be able to back up our code in the repo. Because if you're like me, right, you uh, may have a great idea. One day you build something, tomorrow you change it, and you come back and you say, no, what I did yesterday was better. And of course, some of the SQLs were complex. If you lose it, then you got to start over. And two, that coupled with a good readme file inside of your GitLab project really helps those down the, down the road from you, you know, have the who, what, when, where, how, and why of the project and how it got started. So the why. What is the overall goal? I mean, because Facebook already has all this data. They have all of the aggregations already done. They have graphs, reports, and that's true. But what if you have quite a few folks who need access to this data? That can create a security pain point. Not just really adding the access is not that hard, but keeping up with all that access. What if I really want a customized view on top of that? What if Facebook, the graph they have is great, but I want to add some more things to it. Then go a step further. What if I want to build a dashboard or have some other views where maybe I want to introduce some Twitter stuff, some Twitter data, or maybe some Google Analytics data? And then what about the data analytics folks? What if they want to get in there and slice and dice, maybe do some trend analysis for data science reasons? And I want to add, I didn't put this as a bullet point, but I wanted to add real quick, I think this is a real positive uh, for Facebook. I think this really ups their offering to the data community because this data can truly be utilized. We thought, a lot of times when people are hit like and they hit, you know, they see the post or, or they open the image and want to look further, we don't really get that insight. We, we, we see people doing it, we see the likes, but this really gives us access into that data, how much is being done, what, what's really trending. So without further ado, let's jump into the next piece, which is going to be the Facebook setup. All right, let me jump over there. So the Facebook setup is probably the easiest part of this entire uh, process. Uh, there's not a whole lot to do inside here. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of red tape. You're going to have to have someone with administrator access uh, grant the user that you're going to use to pull this inside data. You're going to have to have them come in here and set this up at the, initially at least. But it's real simple. They're going to go into settings. Let's see if I can do this right here. Here we go. Uh, page roles. And pretty simplistically, they're going to come in here, type in the username or the email, choose analyst, and hit add. That's truly it. Uh, the analyst role doesn't have really any power inside the actual page, but it does give them access into the insights data. And that analyst role will appear down here with the rest of the analysts. And pretty much that's it uh, for Facebook. <laughs> There's not a whole lot to do there. But again, you can see how this would become a kind of an administration nightmare if you have to constantly keep this updated and go back and forth and adding and removing people as, as needed. Next part, let's tip over to Fivetran. So, I'm going to try to keep this a little bit basic. This is not going to be a Fivetran tutorial of how to use Fivetran's interface, but I'm kind of jumping through the steps of what we did to get this going. So first you need a destination, right? Uh, I don't have account uh, ownership of, of our Fivetran account, so we already have one built. I can't go and change this. But what I will do is I will show you the setup guide for Snowflake. And this is how awesome Fivetran is. One, two, three, four. Literally in four steps. You can probably go through this in 10 minutes. 
in four steps, you have a destination connector uh, from Fivetran into your Snowflake instance. Very easy. They did an awesome job with this. And actually, once we set that up, this is what we'll kind of see behind the scenes inside of Snowflake. We'll have our Fivetran database set up here. Pretty neat. So let's go back. What do we need? So we have a destination set up. We also need a connector, right? We need, about, we need to be able to bridge that gap. So we have to connect from Fivetran into the Facebook Insights. So we'll click on connectors. I can walk through some of this. Click add connector. Let's go ahead and filter this a little bit. Go to Facebook pages. Very simplistic. I have one field to enter, technically. I'll come in here, type in hash map. This is what we have. I'm not going to complete this. I'm just kind of showing you what we did. So this is our destination schema. So inside that five chain database you just saw on the Snowflake page, this is the schema that's going to build inside for this project. I hit authorize. I won't do this, but what happens when I hit authorize, all it's going to do is take me to Facebook. This is an OAuth process. It's going to have me authenticate with the user that has that analyst role. I'm going to get the token. It saves it off. And that's going to be the access. That's going to be the credentials it needs to transfer that data from the Facebook Insights API into Snowflake. And once again, you can see how great of a job Looker, I mean, uh, Looker, how great of a job Fivetrain did on the site here. They have the setup guide, prerequisites, all the steps involved. This is going to take you a minute. Maybe to do this is going to be very quick. Great job, guys. Let's back up here. I'll show you our current connector. So after you hit the, uh, the say on the uh, connector, it's going to basically show you this page. And once this page comes up, you'll be able to see all the different assets that you can pull out of the Facebook's Insights API. For our demonstration and for our POC, I just chose everything. Uh, most of what you're going to need is probably going to be in these lifetime uh, post metrics, but I just chose everything because it's not a whole lot of data it's pulling over. And uh, so after you after you hit the authorize and it gets to the screen, you have a setup and you have a save and test button that'll appear. Hit that. It'll take you over to this last section here, which is the setup. And this is the orchestration. You can do a quick orchestration on this. I have ours running every 24 hours, just so we can get you know all the updates from yesterday, and so we can see them on the graphs today. There's a couple other things you can have in here checked, like uh, if something's running, if something's going over, you can have it alert you. Uh, you can resync all the data. These are some five trans things that that are, are built into this. And so one of the things I did want to point out is how great uh, five trans set this up. So I'm inside my Facebook uh, connector page. If I had to start biz building visualization, start getting some more insight to this data, I can click on the documentation link. It's going to take me into five trans documentation area. You can see there's an ERD diagram, but the main thing we had to use for this, since we had no idea how to analyze this data and build queries, is we clicked on this link to Facebook's uh, pages uh, for the for their API documentation. And this will take you directly to Facebook. We're not going to do that because that's a, that's a gigantic site, but you can go there. But this is what we had to do in order to get really understand this data and be able to, because uh, again, a lot, of this, a lot of this data is already aggregated. It's already summed up for you. And so you really have to go here and kind of figure out how to build your queries uh, out of this website. Just wanted to show it to you. And that's it. Believe it or not, guys, that is it. Once you set up this up and you hit save and it runs, it's going to take, it says over here, like I said, again, average to five minutes. Uh, I think ours takes less than four minutes to, to sync up. So what's going to happen is once this runs, literally, that's it. The pipeline is done. I could click over here. I would click five trend. Hashmap Facebook pages was what, what the uh, schema we just set up. And here's all the tables, around 40 something tables. It's a very easy I mean, almost, guys, we could end this megabytes video just like this in a few minutes because that's how fast we could set up a destination. That's how fast we could set up a connector and, you know, give the analyst role inside Facebook and you're done. You already have data flowing in. But again, you know, where's the fun in that, right? We don't want to have just data. We want to have some insight, no pun intended again, to uh, the, face, the Facebook Insights data. And that's where uh, GitLab and Looker come into play. So once again, this is not going to be a, a, a GitLab or a Looker... Um, tutorial on how to use those tools. Uh, we're going to kind of just kind of walk you some of the steps of what we did inside these tools. Not a lot of work needs to be done inside of GitLab. Literally, all we did was create a project and we created a, a development service account. And that service account is going to be used behind the scenes by Looker uh, to do pulls and various things behind the scenes of uh, interfacing with GitLab. But that's really it. We built uh, the project, added a, added a user, had, they had to have developer, uh, developer access. Really behind the scenes, all Looker's going to do, and we'll look at that in a second, all Looker's going to do is update this models and this view section. That's pretty much it. And going back to what I talked about a while ago, 
uh, a good README is, and this isn't a great README, but it's a good README. It gives an overview, the scope, our, our technology stack, right? The links we use to get here, uh, all the phases that we're doing, all the steps. We're gonna go over some of these steps here in a second of what we did, but this is really important. I'm, I'm gonna harp on this a little bit because this is what you always wanna have inside your project is a really good README. Again, so when you, win the, when you win the lottery and you go off on your own, someone could come behind you and see what you did before and uh, be able to pick up where you left off. So let's jump over to Looker and of course, again, this is not going to be a tutorial over, over, the, over the Looker uh, interface. We're strictly going to walk through some of the steps we did. And I'm going to open up our Facebook POC project. Again, you can see this is already hooked into our GitLab. Uh, right away, the first thing that shows up when I open this up is the readme file, which is very nice. I'm going to scroll down here to the steps involved. And we're going to walk quickly walk through these bullet points. Everything with GL is GitLab. Everything with LKR is Looker, kind of what was done where. So inside of GitLab, we created a project. We ensured that I'm at least a developer. So when, I, when I'm doing work inside of Looker, I can, um, I can commit and you know, check things out. We add the service account, like we just spoke about in, um, in GitLab. And inside of Looker, I set up a Snowflake connection to the Fivetran database that we, that we created uh, via the connector and destination. Also, I created a new LookML project, which is what we're looking at right here. I took the SSH key from this project, added it back to GitLab, so now Looker and GitLab can, can communicate. Then inside of Looker, I bound the project, I created a branch, and then here, this line right here, is where most of our time was spent. So all the looks, right, going to the Facebook's, uh, Facebook's API uh, documentation, building all the queries, trying to figure out how we can get insight into this data that we, had no, 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 that we know nothing about. So most of our time was spent there. And I'm going to quickly just walk you through a really fast uh, setup of what we did. So inside of Looker, you can run the SQL runner, and you can do this that exact same thing inside of Snowflake, inside the, the query engine as well. Let's do it inside of here because it's going to give us a little more info. Let me get the one of the queries that we built. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it inside here and hit run. And that quick we can get insight into our data. Uh, this query may take, I say that quick, uh, this query may take you a while to build, but, and again, this is a more simple one. Some of them are very complex, but regardless, I, I get access to this data. And of course I can change the, the visualization to whatever I need to do, um, whatever, right? It doesn't matter, whatever, whatever's the most appealing and build my looks. These are all called looks inside of Looker build my looks and then ultimately get to a point where I'm done. I, and I think for this POC we built, let's go look, we built three for audience and three for actual statistics here. Let's jump over to this. Here we go. Hopefully I don't demo and die. Yes, here we go. Awesome. Here is our Facebook Insights dashboard. Yeah, we have three uh, looks for page activity and three looks for audience type uh, metrics. And this is great. Oh, well, I added a fourth here. This fourth look is not really for audience, but it's a, a data freshness. So the time this video is recorded is March 12, 2021. And you can see in March 12, 2021, this um, uh, Fivetran uh, updated the data. So I can, I'm pulling this actual data from the Fivetran timestamp inside of the Snowflake um, database. So you can see we can uh, quickly jump to this data. We can see, again, this is great because I can now I can pull all the trends I can see from this month to this month. I had 150% change. And I can walk through all these. Uh, I can see the engagements, right? The impressions, the percent of change uh, from month to month. These are all like six month uh, uh, trends. The views, right? Uh, my top five trending posts and links to those so I can go see directly what they were. Paid, unpaid fans total, how many current fans I have. And what we don't want to see is fan drops, this kind of thing. We want to make sure these stay at zero, right? Or, you know, if, if we're in that in that business. But again, guys, this is it. I mean, this is how quick we can build things. And this is what's really awesome about this. So let's, let's, let's recap the main goal here. The main goal wasn't this dashboard, but it was to get the Facebook insights data out of Facebook into Snowflake, uh, you know, via Fivetran. But this is kind of the proof, right? This is what we look at. This is how we give uh, feedback to the business of what we're of why we're doing these things and how this data pipeline matters. So what we're going to do in part two of this is we're going to probably take some of this data that we built here, that is in where all those looks you just saw are querying this this raw data here. This is where Five Trans dropping it in a raw staged format. And typically in most data warehouses, right, you're not going to have unless you're doing analytics, some deep analytics, you're not going to be querying this raw data. 
So probably what we're going to do in like in a phase two is maybe add some uh, concepts, maybe using DBT, and we're going to build some transformations on this data to truly build some data marts that a BI developer can come in and literally see and be able to access very quickly, build simple queries. And also inside of Looker, we won't go into this too much, but Looker has um, various views and models that you can just build inside of Looker that they can actually you know, drag and drop outside of Looker not to build any SQL. So maybe that'll be a phase two of this. Uh, let's jump back over here so we can finally finish with this. But in closing, I mean, I really hope you enjoyed this megabyte. I hope it gave you some insight, again, no pun intended, uh, to your Facebook Insights data. And thanks for watching, and please subscribe uh, for more HashMap content. HashMap Megabytes.